real name, Haddock. Mr. Rattle scores a century for the gentleman. A name, Haddock. Century by Mr. Rattle. Read all about it. Haddock. A name, Haddock. Mr. Rattle scores a century for the gentleman. Thinking of that. A name, Haddock. Century by Mr. Rattle. Haddock. Evening, Mr. Raffles. Mr. Raffles scores the century for the gentleman. Evening, Mr. Raffles. Congratulations, sir. Huh? You did well against the players today. Oh, that. And the luck. Oh, a century isn't luck, sir. Isn't it? Like everything. Well, my friend's coming in a minute. Right, sir. Is that you, Bonnie? Yes. Did you get an evening paper? All of them. Good man. Sling your coat outside and have a Scotch whiskey. Didn't know you were so fond of reading your own praises. What? Oh, good Lord, no. No, I don't want to read that kind of thing. I simply wanted to see it. Ah. Whiskey and on the table, Sullivan's in the box. Oh. <laughs> Wanted to see what? Hmm? My dear Bunny, you simply long for explanations. It's natural. Is it? I long for mysteries with no explanations. Hate mysteries. Very well. Lord Milchester is having a cricket week when his son, Viscount Crowley, comes of age. Oh, yes? Among their opponents will be the Free Foresters and the Lincolnshire gentlemen. You're not a Free Forester and you don't come from Lincolnshire. Viscount Crowley spoke to me at Lord's today. That's decent of him. And he's bringing his father to see me this evening. Any moment. As if they're asking for your hand. Well, they are. And my wrist, and my eye, and my spinning finger. Crowley's 21st would be dust and ashes without me. And there they are, punctual to the second. I say, Bunny, would you care to read the papers in my bedroom? Then you'll know as much about the Milchesters as I do. How do you do? Very glad to make your acquaintance. Come to the system. Simply to back up my son's rather bold invitation to come and play some uh, rustic cricket for us next month. I'd be delighted. Good, good. I'm awfully sorry to say I've accepted an invitation to go fishing at that very time with my old friend Bunny. And he's so keen on fishing that I simply dare disappoint him. It's been arranged for ages or, well, there's simply nothing I'd have liked better. Oh, pity. Yes, isn't it? Well, if you must go fishing, you must. But, um, is your friend Bunny a cricketer by any chance? Bunny? Well, oh, he's a simply splendid cricketer, but why? Well, we have first-class fishing in our part of Yorkshire. Good idea. If he'd like to come down to Milchester, too. Uh, play cricket morning and afternoon. Uh, you can flog a stream before breakfast and after dinner. Well, yes. That seems to solve everything, doesn't it? What a good idea. You're sure your friend will agree? Absolutely. He'll be in seventh heaven. But I'm an absolute duffer at cricket. So is Crowley. He only got into the 11 at Harrow by stopping there till he was 20. He's keen. I'm not even keen. Bunny, it was the only way I could get you invited down there. Why do we have to go down there? I feel absolutely venomous myself. Nothing riles me more than being asked about for me cricket, as though I were a pro. Then why on earth go? To punish them. And besides, I've just noticed, we happen to be jolly hard up at the moment. Ah, I thought it was that. What else could it be? What else but crime? They're going to have the very devil of a week of it. Balls, dinners, swagger house party, general junketings, and obviously a house full of diamonds. Diamonds galore. Diamonds for you to steal? With your help, Bunny, with your able assistance. Who from? People who invited you? You know me, Bunny, no man better. As a general rule, nothing would induce me to abuse my position as a guest. I've never done it. 
But when I'm hired for my cricket, like the waiters and the band, by heavens, Bunny, we shall take our toll. Isn't it rather a vulgar sort of thieving? Yes, vulgar. I'm not fit for a gentleman, but I can't help that. We are vulgarly hard up, and that's all there is to it. Besides, these people can afford it and deserve it. The Dowager Marchioness of Melrose will be there. I met her once at a grand dinner. She wore a diamond and sapphire necklace that must have been worth 10,000 pounds. Phew. Mm. If she wears it at Milchester. By heavens, Bunny. That necklace shall be mine. The only thing is, I'm not much of a hand at fishing. And I can't play cricket. And for the sake of amateur crime, I shall have to teach you. Like that. Yes. <laughs> Let's try something else. your eye on it. Close your hands on it. And as a reward, I shall stand you the very best lunch this place could provide. Gratefully accepted. Oh, I hold your gratitude for a moment. The lunch may not deserve it. Perhaps you can ask... Perhaps we can ask the landlord. What's the matter, Jim? On second thoughts, do you think we should have lunch here after all? I begin to doubt it. What? There's a little pub across the square that could probably do us a sandwich. Oh, uh, good morning, gentlemen. Are you having lunch? Well... Landlord! Oh, uh, excuse me a moment, would you? Yes, sir. If you want to, let's go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Now, I hope we shall have the pleasure oh, of seeing you again. Good day, sir. Good day. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Good day. Uh, now, gentlemen, I'm afraid we've decided... We've decided nothing till we see the menu. Could we have it? The menu? Yes, certainly, sir. Uh, perhaps if you just go through... I need a good lunch. I've just had a shock. The chap in the window? Yes. What's he doing in these parts? I knew it. He's a plain-clothed detective. Uh, here you are, gentlemen. Oh, there's a nice steak pie as well. I'll leave you to choose. How far are we from the Abbey? Melchester Abbey? Oh, uh, two and a half miles. Oh, uh, are you gentlemen going there for the celebrations? For the cricket week. Oh, very nice, too. Gentleman who was over there, he's a cricket enthusiast. He's come down to watch. Apparently, they're going to have some good people playing. I'm delighted to hear it. <sighs> Our friend in the window hasn't just come down here to watch cricket. Doesn't give us much of a chance. Nonsense. We're cleverer than he is. He's a pro. Exactly. It's gentlemen against players. And the gentleman will knock them into a cocked hat. They're not poor, Bunny.
Mr. Raffles, I'm delighted you could come. Hello. Very glad to see you. You're the Hello. guest of honor, you know. We're relying on you to skittle the free foresters tomorrow. And to knock their bowling all over the field. Yeah. And this is your friend who nearly took you fishing. Yes, funny. I understand you're something of a cricketer yourself. Well, not really. You were marvelous at school. In the 11? I was captain of the 11. Oh, we should expect great things of you. We shall have some very good cricket this week. What? Very good what? Cricket. Oh, no. I never watch it. I have a nap in the afternoon. That way I get a better appetite for dinner. You know Lady Melrose, of course. I've met her. I know her, that's putting it too strongly. There's nothing to know, except her love of champagne. And her wealth which allows her to indulge it. You were looking at her necklace. Ah, well, it would keep a poor man alive for... A hundred years. Or two. Sometimes I wish I were Robin Hood, to take from the rich and give to the poor. Don't you? Well, yes, yes. sometimes. Wouldn't it be splendid? To take from the rich, yes. And if by poor, you mean hard up, I entirely agree with you. Which is your Mr. Raffles? Yes. On the other side. Fourth from North Milchester with a very pretty girl on his right. He doesn't look like a slow bowler. Oh, he is. The finest in England. Yes. He looks more like a dashing bat. Well, he's that too. I hope Lady Margaret appreciates him. Maybe. That's Lady Margaret next to me. Now, who else can you tell me about? No one. Yeah, well, All right. I'll tell you about the ones I know. Please. Can you keep a secret? I think I might. Well, are you afraid of burglars? Burglars? Yes, but not so loud. It's supposed to be a great secret. I really ought to tell you. Tell me what? You promise not to speak of it? Your solemn oath? Of course. Well, there are burglars in the neighborhood. Are there? Two of them. Two well-known jewel thieves from London. Two? Yes, they've been seen. Oh, where? Do you know Warbeck Junction? About two miles from here. Two and a half? Yes, two and a half. No. Yes, we, I had lunch at the pub there. Well, then you may have seen them yourself. Oh, why? Well, that's where they were. Exciting. <laughs> yes, isn't it? I wouldn't know except Lord Milchester told Papa. Papa? He's the rector here. No, I'm only asked to make an even number. I just told you about the burglars because this is the real secret. Lord Milchester has got a detective down from London to catch them. Has he? And put them behind bars. Isn't it fun? Yes. Mm. Raffles, could I have a word? Hello, oh, Bonnie. Enjoy yourself. Uh, Raffles, I've got to speak to you. Uh, eh? Raffles, come and sit beside me. I want your advice for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm afraid my son's ordered me to be captain. <laughs> ah, there we are. Sit down there now. Right. You must have a little get-together yourself. Mm. You're a cricketer, I suppose. <laughs> Why do you suppose that? Young, athletic. You look like an English public schoolboy. Well, they'll have beaten it into you. Well, yes, a bit of it. You don't approve? Cricket, regarded as a game, is vastly inferior to golf. But regarded as a subject for photography, it offers a great deal. You're interested in photography, Mr. Clefane is the name. Mr. Clefane. It's my hobby, it's my career, and my passion. I hope to take during my stay here such a series of cricket photographs. Photographs of you people in action, such as have never been taken before. Uh, yes. Really? <laughs> Progress goes forwards by leaps and bounds. Sir, 
the increase in sensitiveness of gelatine emulsion during the last half dozen years means that whereas it took one tenth of a second exposure to get a good negative at F11 in sunlight, it now takes one fiftieth of a second. As a result, I can photograph you catching a ball or striking a ball. I can capture forever any split second of time I wish. I've got to talk to you. I didn't get a chance downstairs. No, no, I had to give Lord Milchester a short course in captaincy. I say, this is a bit of a hole, isn't it? My room's much bigger. You are the guest of honour. Yes, but this is a sort of servant's quarter. It's the maid's room, I think, when the maid has to be near her mistress. Old Lady Melrose is just over the corridor. Is she, by Jeff? But we can't do anything. I shall have that necklace if it's the last thing I do. Raffles, you can't. We've been spotted. We're being watched. There's a detective here, down from London. Is there now? We're in a dreadful hole. All we can do here is play cricket and behave ourselves. Oh, why? They've spotted us. Having lunch at Warbeck Junction, two famous jewel thieves. <laughs> I'm glad to say I'm only famous for me cricket. And you, my dear Bunny, aren't famous for anything except jumping to the wrong conclusions. What? The man they spotted is the man who was having lunch at the inn. The detective? His name is Crawshay. He's the cleverest thief in London. I had a drink with him once, and our mutual fence. No, it wasn't like this, of course, and I talked to the East End lingo. But I'm rather afraid he may have remembered me. I hope not. Yes, it might be inconvenient. They said two thieves. And then he's probably got an accomplice. But the detective... Oh, yes. Did you like him? What? We've just been talking to him for an hour. You don't know a detective when you see one? Mr. Clefane, the Scotch photographer? A Scotch he is, photographer he may be, Mr. Clefane. Alas, no. He is Inspector Mackenzie of Scotland Yard. Mackenzie. Whose clutches I have narrowly escaped on more than one occasion. Well, you daren't do anything now, as you value our skins. Yes, I agree. Thank God. But there are all sorts of possibilities in these three cornered combinations when A is watching B, so they don't have any time left to see what C is doing. Now, Mackenzie is a very big A, and Crawshay is a just as big B, but it would be great to nip in between them and score off them both at once. You can't! No, it would be worth a risk, Bunny, to do that. It would be worth risking something to take on someone like B and his men at their own game. That would be something like a match, eh, Bunny? Gentlemen and players, at single wicket, by Jove! It would be a great game, Bunny. It would be a great game. Hello, Bonnie. Congratulations on your catch. It was brilliant. It stuck, and I just closed my hands on it. The way to make them stick? Well... No one but a first-class cricketer could have done it. Oh, I don't know. Afraid I've got to put my pads on. I'm number three. Where am I? Number four. That's too high. It's much too high. No one but a first-class cricketer. Excuse me, just a Ah, uh, Batwell, you've got a famous cricket enthusiast watching. What? Where? was magnificent. Oh, it was just luck. I took the most magnificent action photograph of you 
running like a mad dog to catch that ball and then going head over heels like a jackrabbit. You were ridiculous, but it makes a superb picture. Just wait till I develop it. Yes, I will, Mr. Kilfain. I'll show it to you tomorrow. I've got my own dark room, a wee closet in the servant's part of the house. Will you be doing any more catching today? No, just batting. It's a pity. It's a great pity. <laughs> I thought you batted jolly well. Raphael shielded me from the bowling. You put on 50 together. I got five of them. Oh, if you don't like compliments about your cricket, I'm sorry. I shall have to interest you by telling you something exciting. Oh, what? Lord Milchester told my father he thinks that they, you know who I mean by they, are going to make their raid tonight after the ball. Exciting. Yes, and they've got their detective watching the servants. He thinks it may be one of them. Do you think it is? No idea. Do you suppose Crawshay has an accomplice in the house? Nothing more likely. Do you think they mean to try tonight? When we've drunk too much champagne, it's very possible. But I wonder how the professors will go to work. That's what one wants to know. So that one can keep to windward of them, and Mackenzie too. Raffles, don't think it's of it. It's all right, my dear Bunny. I am not going to do anything wrong. I just... Wish I knew what their game was, that's all. Bonne nuit, Madame la Marquise. Je vous souhaite bon repos. Bonne nuit, Monsieur. Bonne nuit, Mademoiselle. Bonne nuit, Mademoiselle. Dormez bien. Accomplice? Wouldn't mind in the least. <laughs> Good night, Raffles. Good night, my dear fellow. Bonnie, dorme bien. Come along, let's see if we can catch the other one. 
I thought I heard a shot, didn't you? I thought I heard three. Come on. Hello. What's happened? It's profane. Oh, he's got a bullet in him. Oh, good God, badly. No, no, it's not so bad. It's in the fleshy part of the leg. But it fulfilled the function of stopping me. Oh, I'll help him back to the house. Oh, so he got away, damn him. And there's nothing to show which way he went in this darkness. Hello? Oh, it's Raffles. You chucked it too? No good. Can't see a thing. Oh, we've got one of them at all events. Sorry about the other one. And he shot Clefane, did he? His name isn't Clefane at all. He's a Scotland Yard detective down here to help us with these villains. You don't, sir. Mid pleasures and palaces, no we may. Mm, uh, come on, buddy. The porter will bring the other things up, and you and I will have a glass of Scotch whiskey to celebrate. Mid ever so humble, there's no place like home. Thank heavens we got out of it scot free. And the professors have it, eh? The players are victorious? Yes, and I'm jolly glad. What, that Inspector Mackenzie got shot? That you and I were on the decent side for once. The decent side? You mean the losing side? Is that your idea of decency? You're hopeless, buddy, quite hopeless. I mean, I'm glad we came out of that week with our hands clean. Have a drink, you need one. I really am. I take it you wouldn't have refused your share if the boodle had fallen to us? Well... Have a Sullivan, you need a smoke too to calm you. You deliberately refuse to understand what I'm saying. Not at all. I completely understand that you positively enjoy coming off second best. No. Nor do I. But there's no disgrace in being beaten by professionals. I admit the professor's methods were full of interest. I learnt a great deal. That trick of lowering the jewel case out of the window. How do you know? Of course, I've been waiting under the window for hours. Once again, how do you know? Well, after I said goodnight to you and the French maid came out of Lady Melrose's room, I confess I was fretting after that necklace in particular. What did you do? I went up to my room and just as I was about to turn in, I happened to glance out of the window. You see, my room was just above the dear old ladies and I wanted to see if there was any chance of using my sheet for a rope. I saw something moving in the bushes. So, of course, I turned off my light. And it was a lucky thing that I did, for there, right down below me, was Crawshay. He didn't see me, but I saw, just for an instant, and then again for an instant, a few moments later, a tiny flash of light. I knew what it was. I have my own watch dial daubed with luminous paint. It makes a lantern of sorts when you can get nothing better. But Crawshay wasn't using his watch as a lantern. He was looking at the time. He'd arranged an exact time. You saw him there and you did nothing? On the contrary. There was not a moment to lose. I marched straight downstairs and into Lady Melrose's bedroom. You did? To save the jewels. Now, at least, I was prepared to shout to the world that I was saving the jewels. But the wicked criminal hadn't arrived yet. It wasn't time yet. And the dear old lady is far too deaf and too fond of her dinner to wake up, even for burglars. And you left the jewel case there for those thieves to take? Well, yes, of course. If there hadn't been a jewel case, they wouldn't have taken it, would they? Besides, I didn't want the case. What do you mean? I would have shown you before. But your innocent face was worth a fortune to the firm.
like it. Like everything else. It's good enough sport until you discover a better. As a source of excitement, it isn't in it with other things that you what are funny. Where's the satisfaction of taking a man's wicket when what you really want is the contents of his safe? I grant you, spin bowling is a useful exercise in low cunning. But I'd chuck up cricket tomorrow if it wasn't for the glorious protection it affords me. I should have thought it brings you before the public far more than is safe or wise. That's exactly where you're wrong. To follow crime without punishment, you simply must have another career. The more popular and the more public, the better. It's my belief that Jack the Ripper was an eminent member of Parliament whose speeches on reform were reported alongside his atrocities. And every time I do anything at Lord's, it becomes more impossible to think of me except with a bat or a ball in my hand. Raffles the cricketer. The words are synonymous. You hope so. After all, Rochester, he's convinced that Crawshay took the Melrose necklace and disposed of it before he was caught. So is everyone. Thank heavens for that. There is one man, of course, who knows that Crawshay didn't take it. Inspector Mackenzie. Ah, he may suspect he can't know for certain. I was thinking of someone who does know for certain. Crawshay. Crawshay is safe in Dartmoor. No, he isn't. He escaped yesterday afternoon. What? Read the newspapers. In dense fog, he made a bolt for it and got away under heavy fire without a scratch. Well done. I agree. A fellow with that much grit deserves his liberty. Where is he now? Could be anywhere, north, south, east or west. Where do you think? I'm expecting the beggar to turn up here. Does he know about you? He's got eyes in his head and brains behind them. He's got a good idea I'm not just a cricketer. Why do you think that? Because he wrote and told me so before his trial. He wrote to you and you never told me? He would only have worried you. What did he say? Oh, that he was sorry he'd got run in before he'd been able to pay me a call. But he trusted it was only a pleasure deferred and so on with certain proposals for the future. Proposals? Yes. What fun. I do hope he gets away with it. You want him to come here? It would be nice to see him again. It is nice to see him again. Bunny, let me introduce our distinguished confrere, Mr. Reginald Crawshay. Mr. Crawshay, I am proud to make your acquaintance. How the deuce did you get in? Never you mind. Let's talk about how I'm going to get out. Oh, that's better. Drink whiskey and soda? No, I drink it neat. What can I do for you, Mr. Crawshay? You know without me telling you. Give it a name. All right, I want out. I want out of London and England and Europe. That's all I want of you, mister. Very reasonable. We're brothers in arms and you'll see a brother through. Let's put it at that. You'll see me through in your own way. The details, I'll leave to you. Cheers. We must see what can be done. We must. I uh, hope you take a bigger size than these. I'd better see if you're giving me time. I only just got in it for you. And you won't tell me how you got in. What's the use, Lord love you? I can't teach you nothing. <laughs> you seize the situation, Bunny. Hmm? If our friend here is copped, uh, to use his language, he means to blow the gaff on you and me. He's considerate enough not to say so in so many words, but it's plain enough and natural enough. Is it? I'd do the same in his place. We had the bulge before. He has it now. It's perfectly fair, don't you think? Well, I suppose We must take on this job. We aren't in a position to refuse it, even if we were. I should take it on. Our friend here is a great sportsman. He's got clear away from Dartmoor. It'd be a thousand pities to let him go back. Any way you like, I'll leave the whole thing to you. Questions? Think you were to waste a time? Must have been. And here? Not in this fog, not with any luck. And you got him by the bedroom window? That's about it. Don't you think he was seen? I don't think so. Let's hope you're right. Well, I have to go out to dinner. And, Bunny, I dare say you've got an appointment. No, you don't. You don't get away that easy. That's the worst of you, professors. You never will use your heads. Don't talk through your neck. Talk straight out, Kershaw. As straight as you like. I see you through my way or not at all. If you don't want to trust me, there's the door. Go out and tell the police what you like and be damned to you. And take a dirty hand off my arm. <laughs> That's talking. I know where I am when you talk like that. I'll trust you. You're doing the sensible thing. I hope you gents aren't too stony. I'm stony broke. We'll see you through properly. I owe you part of the profits of that necklace for making it so easy for me. So you do. You sit tight and leave it to us. I'll have a sleep time, you're gone. Help yourself to the whiskey? No. No, lock that up before you go, will you? Once let me loose on Lush, I'm a gone coon. Take you at your word. One whiskey, I'm all right. More than one, I want to kill people. Heaven forbid. 
Are you ready, Bunny? Ready. I'll walk you back to your flat in Mount Street. You tell me where. To where? Lady Margaret's house. And we must think up a plan for this chap. You'd better. Yes, quite so, we'd better. I'll uh, put out the lights, if you don't mind. Well, it's a nasty raw night. Uh, this one, I think, with the collar turned up. I am in that fire. He's earned it. Well, I should say he has, to get clear away from Dartmoor. Thank you. And into Albany within 24 hours must be some kind of record. It's a pity we can't publish it. Police! There's another. This is crawling with them. Do you think they're after Crochet? I don't know. I'll find out. And don't let anyone out of this and lose their peace. Right, sir. Oh, officer, what's happening? Nothing, sir. Nothing? But surely I heard the voice of our old friend, Inspector Mackenzie. Raffles, this is madness. My dear Bunny, the bold course is the safe one, every time. But if Mackenzie suspects you already... If he catches Crochet, we're done for. If not, we're not. It's as simple as that. Is that you, Mr Mackenzie? Mr Raffles, is it? But what are you doing here, sir? I live here. I'm glad to see you well after your injury at Milchester. Oh, there. It was only a flesh wound. And the chap who did it is escaped from jail, I see. What do you think of that? I have no the particulars. Oh, I thought you might be on his tracks once more. I'm sorry to say I'm not. It's open, sir, if you'd like to go up. The manager's there. Good night, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Raffles. What's he doing here? Sorry, I can't tell you, sir. But that's Mackenzie, the detective. I know him well. Come on, be a good fellow. I won't give you away. Well... It's like this. About an hour ago, a gentleman calls asking after rooms, and I sent him to the office, and one of the clerks goes round and shows him the empties, and he seems to like the set they're up in now. But there was one or two things the clerk couldn't answer, so he goes off to fetch the manager, and when he comes back with the manager, the gent had gone. How do you know? Disappeared off the face of the earth. I wonder how. Well, that's what the manager wondered. And the clerk gives a description of the bloke, and so does I. And the manager looks in his extra special star, and he writes a note to Scotland Yard. And I took it round there in an ansom. Do you know what the note said? No, I don't, sir. But it brought the coppers here at the double. Well, that's jolly interesting. Thank you very much for telling us. Thank you, sir. Much obliged. I'm going up to inquire. Come on, Bunny. There should be some fun. Is it your idea of fun? Well, it's fascinating to see things from their side for once. To watch them closing in. What could be more natural than for us to show a little curiosity? What are you going to do? I'm the faintest idea. The foggiest idea. Boldness. I can see nothing in this damn fog. And what may you two gentlemen want? We wanted to lend a hand. We did so once before, you remember. Your friend did, at least. I chased after Crochet the most I could do. My friend held on to the other thief who split on Crochet, and that's how you got him. That's true. Well, surely that entitles my friend to a small share in any fun that's going. He'll not see much in this weather. What are you looking for? A man we want. He's concealed himself somewhere about these premises, unless I'm much mistaken. You reside in the Albany, Mr. Raffles. I do. Why? I was wondering why the man should have chosen to come here. <laughs> I think he might have wanted to pay me a call. It's not impossible. Will your rooms be near these, Mr. Raffles? The next staircase. And you would have just left them? Just. Had you been in all the afternoon? Not all. Out most of it. I may have to search your room, sir. Why should the chap want to call on me? We shall have to ask him that when we've caught him. I long to hear his answer. 
He seems to have gone up on the roof. If we don't find him there or find some clue as to his whereabouts, I shall have to search every room in the Albany. Oh, what a pity I shan't be here to see. But I'm dining out with Lady Margaret, whom I expect you'll remember. I remember her well. I'll give her your respects. And I'll leave the light on in my rooms and the key with the constable downstairs so that you can get in whenever you want to. I'm obliged to you. My friend will stay and see the thing through. Won't you, Bunny? Yes. So that you can give me a report in the morning. I must go. Oh, Raffles. Can you see anything up there? No! Stick to them, especially if they search my rooms. Right you are. They mustn't poke about any more than is necessary, or they might find something to my disclose. They won't if you're there. You have the face of innocence itself. What about him? Oh, I, I dare say I'll think of something. What? It hasn't occurred to me yet. I'll just run up to my rooms and leave the light on. Good night, Bunny. Good luck, Mackenzie. Only wish I could stay with you. Goodbye, Mr. Raffles. I'll leave the key with your man downstairs. Many thanks. Mm. Mr. Raffles is a very well-respected client of ours. I don't doubt it. And connected with the best families. I wouldn't dream of denying it. Oh, officer. Yes, sir. My name's Raffles. I live here. I promised Inspector Mackenzie I'd leave McKee with you when I went out. Uh, right, sir. In a moment. I'll be down straight away. I promise to leave the lights on. Shall be a second. Nasty night. Uh, yes, sir, it is. Crochet. It's me, Raffles. There's not a moment to lose. Take these. You're going to be me. He's gone. The key. Thank you, Mr. Raffles. Good night, sir. Good night. Mr. Raffles, what time shall we expect you home, sir? No idea. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, sir. Is your man still up there? He is. I hope he's careful on the tiles. They break terribly easily. So do Nick's. What now? I found something. I found what? A rope hanging from the strap by a hook. Uh, how long a rope? It's quite short. I've got it. Did it hang over a window? Ask him that. Ask him if it was hanging over a window. He can see if he leans over the parapet. Did it hang over a window? Hello? Did it hang over a window? I'm coming down. He'll give us the full information. This is not a night for shouting in. What do you hope for? Well, we... if the rope was hanging over a window, the man would have climbed down from the roof and in at that window, into those rooms. He may not be there now. He may not, but he may. It'll be worth our while to look. He may have used the rope to get away to the street. A short rope? Mr. Lister? Was it over a window? Yes, sir, it was. How many windows along? Uh, six counting from here. I should like to see those rooms six windows along. Whose are they? Now come along, men. It can't be that difficult a calculation. Mr. Raffles. Is that a fact? Yes, Mr. Raffles. Then we should have no problem at all, because he promised to leave his key for us down below. Well, of course, he's gone out, hasn't he? Gone out to his dinner. So he said. I saw him go from that window. 
Did you see him hand over the key? It looked like that. He certainly handed over something. Well, I hope it was the key. Oh, Mr. Manager, I shall have to break your heart by breaking the door down. Come on, let's go and see. Don't you think? You only think what, sir? Nothing, really. I thought I had an idea, but I hadn't. You're wasting my time, sir. I predict we'll lay our hands on Crochet this time. What's that? Sir. Are you after Crochet? Is he the man you're looking for? He is. You didn't say so before. In fact, you denied it. I'm not obliged to expose my intentions to every inquisitive member of the public. Uh, Mr. Rattles Key, sir, he gave it me to give you. Thank you. And he's left his lights on. Ah, he keeps his promises. Of course. He's a gentleman. Speaking as a mere mechanic, I feel some surprise. We'll find him somewhere here, I've no doubt. <coughs> and there he is. Raffles! What? He's dead. A case of suicide, maybe. Very understandable. My God! And you can say a thing like that? No, 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 it's not suicide. There's blood on the poker. Someone's whanged him over the head with it. He's killed. Crochet killed him. The drunken madman. No, no, it's not even murder. Just a scratch. I have my doubts whether it would have been enough to fell him. And oh, sirs, he just stinks of chloroform. Thank God he's alive. You said you saw him go out a while ago. I saw that long cloak of his. Of course, I thought he was inside it. And he gave the key into your hand. I could have sworn it was the same gent when he gave me the key, sir. You could have sworn, could you? What's your number? P-34. You'll be hearing more of this, Mr. P-34. Do you know who you've let slip, you butterfingers? Crawshay, no less. The man that broke Dartmoor yesterday. If I've lost him by the god that made you P-34, I'll hound you out of the force. I didn't know, sir. I wasn't a no. And because of your ignorance, a dangerous criminal's escaped, and an innocent man might well have been murdered. Chloroform is simple. When you've used it on others, you know the dose to a nicety. But it's a, a damn difficult thing to knock yourself out with a poker. Infinitely easier to cut your own throat. I thought you were dead. I hoped you would. You might have told me what you were going to do. My dear Barney, I didn't plan anything. I improvised on the spur of the moment. Well, you must have had some idea. You could have given me some warning. Did it come as a surprise? I don't mind telling you. It was a terrible shock. Well, if I'd warned you, it wouldn't have been a shock to you, would it? No, of course not. And did Inspector Mackenzie see your terrible shock? I suppose he noticed it. Oh, I do hope he saw your face. It's the best in the world for showing astonishment and bewilderment and guilelessness and honest innocence. Your innocence is my guarantee, Bunny. I can't be a criminal with a friend like you. Can't you? The thought is unthinkable. Besides, oh, I am punished enough for my crimes. I am violently attacked. By yourself? And I am too late for dinner. And I shall be in Lady Margaret's bad books. Enough punishment for any man. Hmm? <laughs> my humble apologies, Lady Margaret. My lateness is inexcusable. But you have some splendid excuses. Very lame and commonplace ones. I would not have dared show my face except that... That what? That I long to see yours. Come and tell me your lame and commonplace excuses. <laughs> oh, a notorious burglar escaped from Dartmoor, broke into my rooms, a Scotland Yard detective with half the police of London came hunting for him. The burglar got away. I was whacked over the head and left for dead. Mr. Raffles, you are making fun of me. Never let him out. Why did the burglar break into your rooms? You remember Milchester Abbey, where we first met? 
Indeed, I do. While we were there, I came into some money. Almost by accident. And the burglar wanted it. The burglar thought he was entitled to a share of my good fortune. <laughs> Thank you.